Good afternoon. This is Tanisha Laverne Grant with BlackInAmerica.com. Uh, super excited uh, to bring an amazing actress to the platform today. A woman whose career I have followed for a very, very long time and even had the opportunity many years ago uh, in 2007 to be an extra on the set of Cover, which I thought she was absolutely amazing in. Welcome to the platform is Anjanou Ellis, who is just on you know, everybody's list right now. Congratulations to all your success. It's well-deserved. Welcome to the platform. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Listen, I, I, I love your entire journey. You know, um, you and I have one thing in common. Um, I'm a graduate of an HBCU, Cheney University of Pennsylvania, and I know uh, you attended Tougaloo. Uh, before transferring to Brown University and then moving forward with, with your academic career at NYU. Um, you know, can you talk a little bit, you know, as we start the interview, because I do cover also for a platform called HBCU Connect, and just really talk about how Tougaloo helped just lay the groundwork for your academic career. Well, Tougaloo is this, you know, storied school in central Mississippi that um, no one knows, um, but it is, it is central in, in the story about the freedom rights movement in America. Um, it's where, wow. yeah, it's where Fannie Lou Hamer and MLK and even James Brown came um, and, and spoke and, and a lot of, uh, it was essentially the Mecca of the freedom rights movement in terms of where, um, it began and, and that spirit still, still lives there. So, you know, when I went there, all of that was, I didn't, I wasn't familiar, but all of that, I learned all of that while I was there. And I think that the spirit of that place, um, has lived in me, uh, since then and everything that I do, um, I do because I want to honor honor the spirit of those people that went through that school. I love that. Um, when I was a student at Cheney, I had the honor of um, being the Miss Cheney University. So I was a black campus queen. And um, during the whole pageant process and all the tours that we had to do, one of my dearest buddies was Miss Tugaloo. Oh, you know, yeah. one of my dearest buddies was Miss Tugaloo. And so, you know, just in research and developing and learning that, you know, you went to Tougaloo, I was like, oh my God, like, I love this. I so love this. Yeah. You know, so you've done a lot of films and, you know, just moving the clock forward. So what we have um, today, uh, we have the subject that's happening. Um, just talk a little bit about, you know, wanting to be a part of that project and how you came to be a part of that project. Well, they, um, the director, my wonderful director, Lanny Zapoy, um, they came to, came to us with it on, you know, my agents, you know how that is. They, they send yeah, you okay. stuff, you know, um, um, in there when it's, you know, an independent film, especially they're just trying to cast a net, I guess, to see who they can get involved. And I was one of the people that they reached out to. And uh, I just thought that, um, I thought it was compelling, and what made it compelling are uh, the words of Chisa Hutchinson, who is mm. um, uh, an emerging um, screenwriter, uh, an accomplished playwright, um, but this is her first film, that she, full feature length that she's getting, um, getting uh, to the screen, and I love doing work like that. You know, I want to mm. work with people who are, who are just starting out and, 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 and oh, doing... Wow you know, doing really interesting things. Um, I love, I think it's a great way to build a, a relationship with someone um, for a long time. Um, so anyway, they came to me with it and um, I just thought, I thought Chisa's words were um, fascinating. And, you know, when you tell this kind of story, the story about a grieving black mother, you know, it's it's done a lot because that happens yeah. a lot, you know. Yeah. And so, what's interesting to me, and what made it interesting and made it set it apart, was the way the the way that Chisa 
made this woman um, unique and yeah. rare in her story. Um, so that's why. What do you think, in, in your opinion, like, you know, and, you know, we don't have to get real political here or anything like mm -hmm. that, but, you know, there is just such a lack to the greater world, you know, that there's no currency in the black and brown experience, you know, and that just really, it, it just has to stop, you know, and there are so many films and so many documentaries about it, but what do you think we can do just in terms, you know, of the whole defunding the police, these big conversations on how to get, you know, true allies to help, you know, like discontinue the shooting, the shooting down of black lives. Well, I, I try in my own way. I mean, I've I've been I've been active, you know, um, in Mississippi uh, a great deal in doing doing this kind of work. You know, I, I live in a state that where the Confederacy flaunts itself. You know, yeah, and I know you were very active in making sure that that flag came down. Yeah, myself <laughs> and a whole bunch of other people have been working towards that for a long time. But, you know, I, what I in, in that in that battle, what I was trying to make clear was it, that, you know, that flag was um, it was it, it is a physical um, tool of segregation. So mm -hmm. that's it. Uh, it's not a symbol. It's a physical tool of segregation. If you see that flag, you don't think, oh, I, maybe I don't need to eat there. Maybe I don't need to go there immediately you are in battle and that's why it has no place but see you see where that flag was on january the 6th 2021 <laughs> so our battle with though with that uh with the confederacy is not over um it it it, expl it exhibits itself in so many ways we just don't call it that the confederacy yeah. did not die in 1865 it is alive and well so in in on screen and off screen, I try to get in where I fit in. And sometimes, you know, a lot of that is in the street. Sometimes it's in the street. Sometimes it's in, it's in other places. But, you know, right now it's, you know, focused really on storytelling. And a lot of that is because of the pandemic. I can't be in the streets as much as I want to be. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so, you know, I think that Part of that, a lot of great deal of, in a great deal of work has to be in what you are doing, Lavonne, yeah. you know, and what yeah. I am, what I am, what I am doing. And I and I believe that we have to do it ourselves. I mean, we can put yeah. we can we can put energy in in the allied community, but I mean I just don't, I'm not interested in that. Um, because the allies will let you down. And a lot of times they let you mm. down because they don't know any better. But but oh, I, I, wow. I, I wanna, that was really know, powerful, Anjanu. I'm so sorry to cut you off, yeah, but that yeah. was just really powerful what you just said. Really, yeah. really powerful. Yeah, you you you. Because here's the thing. God bless them. God bless them. I believe that my director, by choosing to want, choosing to do this film, certainly has proven herself. You know, to be that. You know. But um, we have to put our energy in ourselves. We have to do yeah. that. So that's yeah. what I'm focusing on. Yeah. What was the overall mood? Like when, when you're on set and, you know, the subject matter is so heavy and you're working with young talent, young Black men, you know, what were those conversations like with them like day to day, you know, just preparing for a narrative that's so heavy? Yeah, well, I didn't, you know, the way that we shot, I didn't have any interaction uh, with, with, um, with Malcolm. I had no, I had no contact with him. Um, I came in, my, my portion of the film was at the end with Jason Biggs. Um, so I didn't, I didn't meet with him. I didn't meet oh, with wow. him. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I, and Sometimes would, you just, you never yeah. know, like what the sequence is, or, you yeah. know, if you're on set together, if you're not yeah, on exactly. set together, you just, sure, you sure. just, you, you never know. I just, I hate yeah. to assume, you know, yeah. but I, I just, I just often wonder, you know, like what, what young black men, you know, are saying, you know, as they're preparing, you know, and talking about a topic, not even a topic. I mean, just something that is just affecting our lives day to day to day to day to day. And there just never seems to be any, you don't see an end coming. 
every day there's just, you know, another black life, you know, that has been cut down, Mm -hmm. cut down every day, a grieving black mother, a grieving black father, an entire family, the brokenness of the black family, you know, and it's just like, what do we do? What do we do? You know, um, I, I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time talking about um, Black pain. Um, I do want to touch, yeah, you know, I, I do want to touch a little bit about King Richard. I know we're here to talk about the subject, but your work is just so expansive right now. Mm-hmm. So expansive right now. And in the culture, we're so proud of you. For those of us who have been following your career for so long, like I said, I had the opportunity to be an extra on cover back in 2007. Yeah. You know, yeah, you know, so it's just like, wow, Angela, every time I hear about your name or see something that you're doing, you know, I'm right there, you know, so we have, um, you know, I casually mentioned about my father who I lost earlier this year to COVID, me and my sister, thank you so much, and um, he was the ultimate girl dad, so I'm, I'm looking at the stills and I'm looking at some of the trailers from King Richard and you know, Venus and Serena and their other siblings, you know, for all dad, you know, what does it mean to you to be a part of this film? Like, this is, this is huge. Will Smith, the story, you know, of a Black father, which often is not in the narrative either. You know, a healthy, dedicated Black father, you know? Right, right, yeah. Yeah, it's exciting. It's exciting for all those reasons that you said, you know, that, we're going to spend two hours or however long the movie is, I don't know. But, you know, those couple hours spending time with this loving Black family, you know? And they're not, you know, it's a lot of, you know, sure, a lot of craziness within that family, you know what yeah. I'm saying? But but there was in, in, in a, an inordinate amount of love in that yeah. home, you know? Yeah. And I get it. I'm just excited. I'm excited for I'm excited for black people to see that. I'm excited for black men to see it. I'm excited for black women to see these women who have been my personal heroes even though they're younger than me, but they have been my personal heroes, you know, since they since I saw that 60 minutes episode that that oh. featured them, you know. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I'll just never remember. I'll never forget, you know, just seeing two brown girls with their beads, their braids, yes. and their beads. Come on, come on. You know, I'm like, this come is on. huge. This <laughs> is really huge. This is absolutely amazing. This is what we need to see. Yes. We need to see, you yes. know, just how beautiful and smart and talented we all are, you know, and just given the opportunity. And that's all it's about. It's like, creating space and having opportunity just to show how brilliant we really are, you know, all of us in this black and brown experience. You know, again, you know, your your resume is just is so extensive. You know, the work that you've done on Lovecraft Country, you know, this film, the subject, you know, King Richard. You know, how are you feeling right now? You know, especially just as a black woman working in the quote Hollywood space, being a woman of a quote certain age. You know, like, how does it feel? Uh, the certain age is 52. That's okay, I listen. Age. Right. <laughs> That's a certain say age. It, say it, say your age. Say it, own it, own every, own every day. And beautiful and stunning, stunning, yeah. stunning. I try to put a little lipstick on for you. I try. You know what? Um, I appreciate it. I appreciate <laughs> it. Um. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I have so much, I have so much to be thankful for that I still, I still, I still have a job. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? And and not because, and not because, of, not because of my age, but I just feel like to make a living, mm. I mean, to doing what I do, doing what I do is, 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 is the odds of that. Are, yeah. are crazy in, in the beginning, you know? Yeah. And so for me to for me to continue to be able to pay my rent and to pay other people's rent, you know. Um, that collective uh, work. That collective yeah, work. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, 
doing doing this i never i never i never lose sight of that part of it you know sometimes the work cannot be every every job you do ain't lovecraft country you know what i'm saying yeah yeah every job you do ain't that um yeah. but you know every time i get them paychecks though i'm like well i shall do it. amen <laughs> amen hallelujah <laughs> tell the truth and shame the devil tell the yes. truth and shame the devil you know in the spirit of uh your castmate you know Michael K. Williams, you know, which is, it's still hard for me to process and reconcile, you know, that he has transcended, you know, that he has transcended, you know, what is his career and the legacy, you know, of all that he left us, you know, what does that mean to you as someone who's had the opportunity, the, I'm sorry, the opportunity, you know, to work on a project together, you guys, you know, on that set, this experience, this unrepeatable event, Love, Lovecraft Country, which you guys did with that is an unrepeatable event. What you've done with the subject is an unrepeatable event. You know, what you're gonna do with King Richard is an unrepeatable event. And just given Michael's passing, like what does it, as you reflect now on that, like what is his body of work and all that he's left? What does that mean to you and how it's impacted, you know, your career and how you will move forward? Um, Michael, Michael, um, first of all, when I started Lovecraft, I was, I, it was, I was in a moment of, I was in a moment of transition when I started, when I started Lovecraft, personally mm -hmm. and professionally, um, and I was in a lot of, I was a wounded person. Mm. And Michael, without knowing it, started that started that healing process for me, just by being who he was, just by being who he was. Professionally, personally, with some other stuff, but professionally, I was really going through it, just mm. questioning myself and questioning my my choices and qu questioning my ability to do it. Do you know what I mean? Wow. My wow. ability to do it, you know? And I had been in a situation, I had been in a professional situation where I was around people who were far more successful than I was. And just their way of working was different from mine. And so it made me think, well, you know, if I did it like they did it, maybe I would be, maybe I would yeah. be more successful. Yeah, you know? yeah, and so I get I, it. I came to Lovecraft with that energy, you know, Ooh. feeling like, you know, feeling, feeling a deficit. Oh, I a know deficit. the feeling. Oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah. Feeling at a deficit. And so I came to, came to my, came to that job feeling like, oh, if I did it like somebody else, I would be better. And then mm. I, then I worked with, did one scene with Michael first scene I did with him and I watched how he worked and I watched somebody move around in the space, move around on that set, move around in the world. And all he cared about was getting it right. All he cared about was getting it right. And he just had uh, an honor and respect for the words that he was saying and a generosity and a, I don't give a F about nobody. I don't give a F, I just wanna do this right. And at the same time, caring deeply about everybody at the same time, it was just, when I say not caring, it, what I mean was, is that he was liberated. Woo! He was liberated. He was liberated from other people's opinions and I wasn't, and I wasn't. Wow. That's what I was carrying with me and watching him and seeing his, seeing his self-liberation. I was like, you know what, if I have to do it this way, and this is how I arrive at being better, that's how I'm going to do it. I'm not going to be worried about because I'm not as far as this person is and I don't do things the way they do. That's how they do it. Yeah. I'm going to follow what he's doing, which is not giving wow. a damn about what anybody thinks. And so... He, I had not one conversation with Michael about my, how I, how I approached acting or anything like that. 
All I did was watch him, just watch him. And he healed me, he educated me. And now all that stuff, all that baggage I was carrying around, I don't have none of that anymore. Falling off. I am free, honey. Falling off. And Michael K. Williams did that for me. He worked that magic in my life. He did that for me. And I never, I never told him. I never got a chance to tell him that. And I'm okay with that, though. I'm all right yeah. with that. I'm all yeah. right. I'm yeah. all right. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. I mean, the man, oh, my God. He has so much He. he I'll tell you this one thing, and I'm going to let it go. He, um, we were having, doing one of these panels about Lovecraft and one of my castmates said, you know, yeah, you know, this is bittersweet because the show is not coming back. And Michael said in his wisdom and brilliance and, and he said, no, it's not bittersweet. Lovecraft did what it was supposed mm. to do. Mm. It did what mm. it was supposed to do. And we need to feel good about that. We need to, be, we, it did what we was and I'm, when he said that, I'm like, okay, I'm free again. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow. He freed me again. Freed me from the pain of, oh, you know, Lovecraft is not coming back. You know, he said that. And it was like, Lovecraft did what it was supposed to do. And so I think that about him in my in my grief. And I'm, I got to tell you, I, I'm better now, but I was, I was really angry and really effed up, you know? And I still have seconds, but it's not as bad. It's not as bad as it was, you know, two weeks ago. And hopefully I'll continue to get better about it. If you can yeah. get better about it. It's a process. Like it. It's a yeah. process. It's a process. Yeah. Yeah. But what I was saying was, is that I feel like Michael did what he was supposed to do. Yeah. Because I don't know one person. In, this, in these conversations, many conversations that I've had about him that didn't have anything other than he was an angel. Yep. He was yep. a brilliant angel. Yep. Yeah. Anjanu, thank you so much. This was an amazing interview. Congratulations on the subject. Congratulations on King Richard. Congratulations on Lovecraft Country. Congratulations on everything that is about to come down the pipeline for you. We are enormously proud of you. We take you very seriously in the culture and the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Again, ladies and gentlemen, Anjanu Ellis, always one to watch, always incomparable, leaving nothing leaving nothing on the table when she walks into the room to do her scenes. And we love you for it. And we thank you for your transparency about Michael. And again, we cannot wait to see what's coming next for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Tanisha Laverne Grant with BlackInAmerica.com. Anjani, you are a light. Thank you for your transparency.